Um, yeah, I just have a, a plan now of what we're going to do the next um, few days here before we travel. So everyone knows what we got the next few days, and we'll prepare as best we can and, and then go from there. So, yeah, it just gets a little more um, gets, gets a little more structured and if we know what we're doing, and we'll prepare that way. Mark, you've you've played for quite a few coaches, obviously, and, and you don't get to the NHL without being a good coach. I mean, obviously. Yeah. What are the things about Paul that that might set him apart or stand out from other coaches? Like, what, what are the things about his style that you think seem to work best for this group? Uh, I think he has uh, obviously a, a ton of experience. So when he says something or asks you to do something whether it be regular season or definitely in playoffs, you know, you can fall back on that experience. You know, he knows what he's talking about and, and you can trust in that. And I think um, f from September until now, um, he's been driving a certain way. He wants us to play every day. It has not let off on us. And, um, and um, yeah, we've just gotten to our game to where we're comfortable in that and, and what he's asking of everyone and, and um, start getting some results. So it's been a lot of fun to play for him, for sure. Two-parter, Mark. Uh, first off, uh, how how difficult is it after, you know, it's going to be 10, game, 10 days between games. When you step on the ice, is it going to be to get up to speed right away? Um, and the second part of that is, I mean, it keeps going longer and longer and longer. How difficult is it to, you know, not know who your opponent is, or is that a, a lot of time where you start studying both of them right now or in the in the past few days? Yeah, <clears throat> as far as um, time goes, I think. I mean, it's game one of the Stanley Cup final. You're gonna uh, you're gonna have some nerves and you're gonna have some excitement there. I mean, we're gonna have some layoff, but. Um, our energy, our, I mean, we'll prepare the right way. Our energy levels will be right. Um, you know, maybe a little bit rusty uh, in certain aspects, but um, we'll be we'll be ready to play. And the opponent, opponent doesn't really matter. I mean, at this point, it's just still we don't play till Saturday. So, I mean, game of hockey can only prepare so much, anyways. I mean, it's it's about uh, it's a lot less about X's and O's once once you get in it. And and um, so we're excited for either one. I mean, um, we'll see what happens. Mark, when you and Eric both came here, you both talked about how you were coming here, you know, to chase that championship. Now that you guys have, obviously, it's been a wild ride till then, but now that you guys have finally had this downtime to kind of let it sink in. Has it sunk in that you guys have already got this far and are now just one series away from making that happen? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, after we 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 beat Carolina, um, pretty unbelievable feeling just to to to, to get back in, into the final and have a chance at it. Uh, so we enjoyed that, obviously, for for a couple of days, and I think down the last couple, it's just now we're focused on on a job, and and we got a lot of work to do, and uh, yeah, you're not uh, obviously not satisfied. We, we we came here to, and we're going to the finals to to try to win the thing, and um, so we're focused on that right now, and um, we'll see what happens. First, I guess to follow up on that, just what has it been like to do this with your brother going around like this? It's fun. I mean. Um, yeah, like I said earlier in the year, it was, it was kind of weird seeing him every day at the rink, you know, like we're, we see each other in the summer for a couple months a year, usually, and maybe a dinner here or there during the year. So to have our families together all year long, um, just for little things like kids' birthdays or, you know, just stuff like that is, was, was pretty cool and, and unique and, uh, you know, it just became normal. And now, yeah, to do what we're doing in the playoffs here and, and just enjoying um, this ride has, has been has been a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you you we envisioned it in the summer. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. You, you hope it's going to happen, and and, and now uh, um, we've been able to to get this far, and hopefully we can finish the job. And then just uh, you've been around a lot of good players, part of long playoff runs. Can you ever remember seeing something like what Matthew did that in the last two weeks here, just with all the game winning goals, overtime yeah. goals, stuff like that? No, I haven't. I mean. Um, we've played a lot, a lot of overtime games, and he's he's the guy that when it's on his stick, you know, he got a chance. He's got a chance to score, or make a great play, uh, and he's just been on fire. So it's been special to to watch. 
uh, and, and, um, yeah, I mean, there's been a number of different guys that stepped up in huge times throughout this thing and he's just done it more than, <laughs> more than most. And it's pretty incredible. So, um, yeah, hopefully you can keep that going. Can you share with us how the tradition of beard rubbing with Aaron Eckblad <laughs> came about and where does that rank on the that, all-term hockey yeah, post-game tradition was, list? I don't know. That honestly was, uh, when was it? Boston. First overtime game in Boston. We were just, we were right next to each other on the bench. So we gave each other a hug right away. And then our beards were obviously rubbing against each other. And then we thought it was hilarious after. And then, and then we kept winning overtime games. So we kept on rubbing beards. So. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, it was a, it's a unique one for sure, but <laughs> we got hit. We, we couldn't stop, you know, it's like one of those things during playoff runs, you get like certain little things that you do along the way and then it just becomes like not superstition, but routine and you know, you know how it works, it's just the way it, way it rolls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just, and then it's just kind of funny and fun and uh, yeah, so. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, uh, have you spoken? With, with Jordan yet, uh, I know it's going to be – it's tough on him. I'm sure he's thrilled for you guys, yeah. but still, there's yeah. got to be a – Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we talked to him uh, a couple days after. Eric and Jared all – we had a – broke it down for, for a while. So, But he's, he's good. I mean, and it's like we've talked about before. I mean, the series was incredibly close. Um, every game was, was so tight. It could have went either way. And um, – He's obviously very disappointed, but um, yeah, I mean, he's um, he's a cat fan now, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he, uh, no, it, it was a, it was a ton of fun. I mean, it, like we were talking about that first game, like that's the three of us playing in that type of game, four overtimes, like could have gone either way. It was just like, yeah, it was just so much fun to to compete at that level with that much on the line. Uh, against your brother, with your brother. I mean, we're just all in, in it, and um, just you don't get that. You don't get that every day, and we're gonna we'll have that memory for the rest of our lives. And it, it was a lot of fun. Mark, you mentioned how Matthews made the headlines with some of these big goals lately, but how everybody it seems like everybody stepped up in big plays, big times throughout this playoff run. Seems like you have a, a whole group of guys where nobody shies away from the moment. A, group of guys that seem to get so confident when the when the chips are down where do you think that that mindset that approach comes from well I think I think just the way we go about our games I think we we go into a game to try to win that game and and I think we don't try to look too far ahead and when when we're when we're in a game we have like you said we have a lot of guys that just go out there and play the game and they're not worried or, or scared to make a mistake to, to cost a team. It's the other way. It's who's going to make a play to, to, to get us over the edge and, and um, to win the game. So, yeah, we have a lot of guys with just a lot of confidence, and, and, and that just trickles down throughout the whole lineup. And uh, we just believe that we can, we can do it on a nightly basis. And, and if we don't, we just wake up the next day and try to do it again. And um, you know, we'll uh, keep that mentality going here in the finals. It's going to be you know, the hardest round of the year. Mark, how much did you know about Brandon Montour before you started playing with him on the back end, and what has impressed you the most about him? I mean, obviously, I, I, um, I didn't know a lot about his game. I know he was, he's been in the league for a long time, and, and he was uh, very good offensively and um, a fast player. But when I when we first got the training camp, yeah, I mean, I didn't know a whole lot about his game, but just seeing him out there in, in camp, how explosive he was, how he just never got tired. You know, he, he, um, he was, he was impressive that way. And, and, and then once we started rolling, he was so confident in everything he was doing. And, uh, and he's just maintained that, that confidence throughout the whole year, wants the puck on a stick, wants to make plays, wants to be the difference maker. And, uh, it's impressive. I mean, he, he's uh, he's been a ton of fun to play with, and and coming to the rink too with every day. He's always in a good mood. He's always positive and laughing and joking, and uh, he's uh, he's had an incredible year. Uh, 